Want candy? Want candy now? What's going on, everybody? Nazdarachi back again with another episode of Relic Review. I did skip the raid campaign banner because for me, it was almost entirely made up of dupe items, and I wasn't going to draw specifically for the offbeat chance of getting Ash's BSB, which, in my opinion, the Ash BSB and the Idea BSB are the two prizes on this banner right here. The Tiro USB is reasonable, but having it, I can tell you that I struggle to find a way to fit it into my strategy. I'm usually always casting wall with Tiro, so I don't really have a good opportunity to fit it in. With that being said, I also already have the rod right here, the Yoichi bow, and the machine gun for Laguna. So really, there's nothing for me on this banner, and I didn't really cover it. But just to get you guys up to speed, if you haven't already made up your mind, that's just kind of my opinion on that banner. Not very good. Now we do have a Final Fantasy Tactics event that just went live. And the banner on it is kind of interesting as well. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it doesn't really have some of the relics that I'm actually looking for on it. So I have mixed feelings on it. It did as well come with a new raid conquest dungeon to conquer Gafgarian. So remember that as well. It should be easy for you guys to get through. And hitting this relic banner right here. For this one, I as well do not have accurate percent information for the draws so just go with the standard that OSBs have anywhere between half a percent to about 1.2 percent chance to drop uh, that would apply to the USB that's on this banner since there is no OSB and burst soul breaks are usually between about 0.7 percent to drop to about 1.5 percent then your Super Soul Breaks are going to be between 1.8% to about 2.5% to drop. That's generally what you can expect from these Relic Banners here. And the first item is going to be the Sousuke's Blade. It is Ramza's USB. Uh, low key, it's just a Super Soul Break that's a 6 star Relic. So going into it, you do have 170 attack. That is the highest that I've seen on any native 6-star item. Usually 169 is what you see. So 170, pretty nifty. Get a nice even number there. No bonus effects though, and no other stats. The Ultra Soul Break here has me miffed a little bit. History's Truth temporarily raised the attack and magic of all allies a moderate amount, and their defense a small amount. Remove the delay from their actions for one turn. So it does have four effects on it, but realistically, it's not what you really want. Temporarily raising the attack and magic of all as a moderate amount is a feature of the Onion Knight Burst Soul Break, so you can either use that or Roaming Warrior it if you absolutely need it. The defense a small amount is pretty negligible, unfortunately, and the one turn delay can be situationally very useful. But just this combination of effects all together make this a very subpar Ultra Soul Break. It doesn't have a Haystega effect, so you're going to want to be casting Shout and maybe Chant over and over again repeatedly instead of this. So other than being a reasonably good stat stick sword for Final Fantasy Tactics, I can't really condone using this item, really. I, I can't really figure out a way to fit it in and make it super useful. Now, it is stackable buff, so with that being said, if you don't have Shout or Onion Knight buff, then this is not going to be a terrible Soul Break for you to get. But if you already have your Ramza reasonably built, or with at least Shout on him, then this is not going to be the prize relic of this banner in my personal opinion. You're better off waiting for the second banner to draw for Thunder God Sid relics. And that's my two cents on the highlight item of the banner here. Next up, we have the Cypress Pole. It's a burst soul break here for one of the new characters, Rafa. You're looking at 55 attack, 132 magic, and 105 mind. No bonus effects. And your burst soul break, Heaven's Wrath. 8 magic, lightning, and non elemental attacks to random targets. Temporarily raise the magic of all as a moderate amount, and raise their resistance a small amount. At least it's lightning and non-elemental, so you will have that split effect going on there for versatility. The random targets is the drawback, 
and the magic buff is actually reasonably good. Because it's magic and resistance, it will stack with other buffs pretty well. It also happens to have a bargain on Burst Command 2, Roaring Sky. Two magic, lightning, and non-elemental attacks to all targets. Lower the defense moderate amount for the magic moderate buff. So with Burst Command 2 and the Soul Break on entry, and another effect that raises magic stacks from another character like Onion Knight or Ramza, for example, you will be sitting rather pretty with your magic stat. Now the trade-off for that is the first burst command, Thundermark, loses any type of cast time reduction for a moderate heal to the ally with the lowest amount of HP. So four magic lightning, non-elemental attacks to one target, and that heal that I just mentioned. Now both of these are black magic, so stacking them with any black magic record materials can come in handy. But overall, you're looking at a lot of buffs on this one. The character, Rafa as well, is capable of doing 4 star dances as well as 4 star white magic. So she is versatile, or he or she, whatever, I believe it's a she, is versatile in doing not only healing and damage, but it can also be hooked up with some of the four star dance breaks so you do have some pretty reasonably good functionality out of the character itself and this burst soul break is definitely not bad probably one of the highlight items on this banner in my personal opinion so next up we have the mage's staff burst soul break for Ovelia here You're looking at 55 attack 100 magic 134 mind staff Heart's Lament, Burst Soul Break, deal 5 white magic holy and non-elemental attacks to one target, restore a moderate amount of HP to all allies, grant haste and burst mode to the user, and temporarily raise the user's mind a moderate amount. This is a reasonable Burst Soul Break for healing here. It does have an instant burst command 1 for large amount to one ally, and your sister's mercy is your standard white mage burst command 2, all allies, small amount of HP. Now, if you have something like Transcendent Dreams or Asylum, like one of my friends mentioned, you really won't need this at all, but for synergy and SID missions, this being your main healer, because like we said before, Rafa can do 4 star healing, but this is going to be your main healer from Tactics. It's not a bad item to have. Again, it's not a top tier heal because it doesn't have any instant effect on entry that heals the whole team like Transcendent Dreams does, and it doesn't have some of the more effective defensive capabilities that you get from Asylum with the bubble shield, but like I said, for synergy, and just to have as a white magic BSB if you don't have enough of them, it is actually reasonably good. Next up we have Burst Soul Break Hero King. It is the Rune Blade for Delita. Sword, 133 attack, no other stats, and the bonus effects are synergy required. Which is, this is the first tactics event we've had in um, probably like two months. So, not gonna be super super useful there, but when it comes around I guess it comes around. First Soul Break Hero King, 8 physical holy fire, lightning, and ice attacks to random targets, haste burst mode to the user, critical hits deal additional damage. So it's a quad element with random attacks. Your burst ability is Godfire Blade, 4 physical holy and fire attacks to one target, critical hits deal additional damage, ice bolt wave, 4 physical ice and lightning attacks to one target, critical hits deal additional damage. Both function as Spellblade class abilities. This is, to me, kind of a subpar Burst Soul Break. Not only are the bonus effects on the weapon itself make it not super worth keeping except for Synergy, but this is a Soul Break that requires another Soul Break to really function properly, and I don't like that, really. It doesn't give you any sort of buff to your actual critical hit probability, so you're gonna need another effect like Eco's BSB to make full use of this item here. There really is actually no items on this banner period that buff the critical hit chance of your team or of a character in particular. So by itself you're not going to get full functionality out of anything this soul break has to offer. Again you really are going to need to combo it with another effect that's going to up the potential crit chance for the team otherwise this is just kind of below average. 
not too thrilled with this one at all. It's part of a pretty short list of soul breaks in the game that are not very functional without a second soul break being cast from another character, or just from another source in general. That's the end of the BSBs. Next up we have the Wizard's Robe. It is for Rafa here, 0 attack, 17 magic, 91 defense, 139 resistance. No bonus effects, it is a robe here. Your super soul break, Ashura, 6 magic, fire, and non-elemental attacks to all targets. Haste to all allies, reduce the user's offensive magic casting time for 2 turns. So this is going to be your synergy source of Hastega. Other than that, there's nothing super noteworthy about it. It will help Rafa if you have her BSB or just in general with the cast time reduction for two turns, but that's really not the selling point of this relic here. I don't know. It's a reasonable Super Soul Break. Again, if you're building these new characters or going for Sid Mission Synergy that you don't already have, it could be an interesting addition to your party, but not one of the highlights of this banner. Next up here, the Lambent Hat. I actually already have this. It is for Ovelia again here. Magic 28, Defense 83, Resistance 121, Mine 37. It's a hat, so pretty much everybody can wear it. Super Soul Break, Divine Ward. Protect and Shell to all allies and automatically heal them. Damage stock up to 2k HP. This is a useful Super Soul Break, potentially even more useful than Rams's USB just because it'll free up some ability slots if you can start the battle with this via Mako Might or Dr. Mog's teachings and just automatically get your Protect and Shell to all allies with the added damage stock makes it pretty useful. Now, it may not be something that you want to rush out if you're in a dungeon that is either going to favor physical or magic and you don't need both Protect and Shell. So that is something to keep in mind that it's not going to be super useful in that situation but if you do need both Pro Shell, then this is going to be a little bit above average of a Super Soul Break. Otherwise, not really anything worth noting. You can get an emergency heal off the damage stock if you absolutely need it, but not what you're intending that to be used for. Super Soul Break Chant, another returning item for Ramza. The Genji Gloves here, Bracers, so everyone can wear them. 26 attack, 18 magic. 95 defense, 91 resistance, and 19 mind. No bonus effects at all here. And the Soul Break Chant, temporarily raise the critical hit damage of all allies and grant them a barrier that negates attack damage up to 30% of their max HP. So it has the bubble effect that Asylum has on it. And again, we're raising critical hit damage of all allies, but we're not providing them an actual increase to the critical hit chance. So you're going to again need your white mage to be set up for something like eco, or find another source of an actual increase to the crit percent chance. Otherwise, it's not super effective, because critical hits, while they do happen, are not really often enough for you to be able to bank on this item. You'd really prefer to be using Shout over this, or maybe starting with Shout and then using Life Siphon to generate enough Soul Break Gauge to cast this as well. But this is definitely not the more powerful of the two verbal Soul Breaks. You want to be shouting more than you want to be chanting unless you can somehow pull them both off. And then if you're doing that, then you really have no room for the USB at all. So realistically, Shout's gonna be your main relic for Ramza here, and then you'll be juggling maybe one or two of the other ones that you have for him to try and find time to cast them off. But with that being said, I wouldn't be upset if I happened to get these here. Next up, we have a Super Soul Break for Delita here, the North Swain Strike, Coral Sword. 127 attack, so nothing crazy on the stat side. Does have a constant boost to lightning damage, small, in effect at all times, so that's pretty neat. Not too many other items on this banner have bonus effects that are super useful. And your super soul break here, the North Swain Strike, is four range physical attacks to all targets. Temporarily lower their attack a large amount. This can be pretty useful in a situation where you obviously need to lower the enemy's physical damage output. The four range physical attacks to all targets are really nothing noteworthy. Low attack count, probably low damage modifier on it as well, being its AoE. Kind of one of the lower tier super soul breaks on the banner. 
unless you're in a situation where you really need that attack break. Wouldn't want to pull that one at all, honestly. And lastly, we have the Grand Armor here for Ramza. Heavy Armor, 129 Defense, 89 Resistance, and no other stats, no bonus effects, and a unique Soul Break Tailwind. Restore a moderate amount of HP to all allies based on their max HP, and grant them Protect. So, if you are using Ovelia's Super Soul Break on this banner, then the Protect effect is really not going to be useful at all. But, being that Ramza is a character that can't normally cast Protect, it's actually quite nifty that he has that on a Relic, so it takes him outside of his normal range of functionality. Gives him a, uh, a white magic effect there. As well, restoring the HP to all allies based on their max. We've seen that on other relics on characters where they don't really seem like they belong. Like Sabin, for example, and Onion Knight. But those actually can come in pretty handy if your white mage is getting swamped as a secondary heal. So again, this is the unique soul break on the banner, so we're not expecting a whole lot. But it's actually pretty reasonable for its purpose. So with that being said, I would least like to draw the Grand Armor there. Definitely not an effect I need in the slightest. That is all the items on the banner there, so let's go ahead and just do a 100 gem draw. Not doing anything crazy on this banner. Again, I personally would recommend waiting for banner 2. There is Thunder God Sid items and some other nifty little trinkets that personally make it a much better banner choice for me here. I did 100 gem draw a 5 star item on the raid dungeon. I did stream that as well, so that was in the stream. So it makes perfect sense I wouldn't get anything good twice in a row here. I generally would recommend waiting for banner 2 unless you really want stuff for Ramza or maybe Ovelia's healing BSB. As well, Rafa's equipment does make her pretty useful and versatile new character with the dances, the white magic, and the black magic. Prizes on this relic banner are going to be the Rafa BSB, potentially the Ovelia BSB depending on what your white mage relic game is looking like already, and maybe the Ramza USB, but it really to me is just a six star super soul break. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this relic review. As always, this is Naz Jirachi. Subscribe to the channel for more FFRK, DBZ Doken Battle, and other video game and geeking goodness down in the future. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will catch you next time. Peace out, y'all. Later.